I'm not angry anymore, and I'm not really sad. Still, I have this puzzle in my head. Well, it's a crazy time to breathe. It's a crazy time to feel. Still, I'll just sit here and receive. While this little voice is speaking. One thing I've learned, if you don't hold their feet to the fire, everybody gets burned. Before you start waving around that freedom of speech thing, when you're in a crowded movie theater and you scream fire, 
you better be able to smell smoke. If you come on this radio show and you start saying incandescent things like that, you better have more behind you, pal, than just your thumb. I've been listening to talk radio for years, and one thing I just can't stand is when the host has to, like, push his way on the people, beat the callers into his way of thinking, extending his ego, or, or when the callers call in and say something so outrageous and the host lets it go unchallenged. The sign you're on the road to truth is the lack of contradiction. You want to find truth, you just don't simply believe somebody because of their authority or their degree or... You, you listen to what they say, you test it against reality, and you hold their feet to the fire. Back and we're live, feet to the fire. I'm your host, James Athianchik, the Black Knight Talk Radio. All right, I, I got on a little late here, and I uh, it's technical stuff. I mean, I, I can't explain it. I got all this nice you know, studio equipment, and I'm getting a buzz on my computer. It's all because of ground. No matter what I do, I seem to make it worse. So I go to my deck, which is whisper quiet, right? It's there's There's no buzz or nothing. But for some reason... When I listen to the end result on the tape, it, it, I don't know, it sounds a little, I don't know what the word, it's not crisp and clear, and I don't know why. I'll be working on it in the future. And of course, everything, it used to be fine. I, it's like, there's like a virus. You know, I'm reading a book, it's called Revelation Space. It's like, what they call it a space opera. And uh, it's, it's pretty outrageous, very atheistic. But, uh, in there, there was a thing called the melding plague where all machinery actually got a virus and caused the machinery to grow weird. So I think, like, hey, maybe that's what I got here. Anyway, um, I do want to go over it a, a tad of what's going on uh, news-wise, and then I want to talk about something. And in, in a way, it's sound, you know, I'm uh, one of the things that turn me off with a lot of Hosts on this is uh, the know-it-all arrogance that they have, and I, you know, I realize I don't even come close to knowing it all. I know what I know, and I don't what I don't, and that's why together we could uh, kind of fill in the blanks. But uh, I, I've developed over the years on my own. This is before radio, just studying. I've come up with principles of how to find truth and reality. I mean, I like to use the word reality better than truth, because now truth has become relative, and reality is relative only in that as you understand it more, it becomes more clear. It's not like all of a sudden up, oh, up is down, and down is up. You know, it just gets clearer. Uh, so, that's what I'm going to go into. I got, I got like a checklist. I wrote it out. Probably not going to be able to write, write my, read my writing, but a uh, big thing going on with the uh, clearer, clearing house from Facebook and whatnot, it's another level of that. They're saying, no, we're not doing it, and they are. So I have, uh, if you look on feedthroughthefireradio.com into the contact section, I got all kinds of links where I'm at. Gab and Mines, I just started at MeWe, you know, which is all right. Gab and Mines, I have stuff on, and, uh, of course, my website and email and all that stuff. And so I, I, I haven't been booted off probably because I don't, I'm not uh, big enough to be a threat, but you never know. Uh, there was a story at Forbes. Now, it's funny. Now, I, I, I posted it. I checked it out. I posted it. I go to it now, and it's not there. A 404. Uh, so either I could have sworn I clicked on it. I mean, you were getting all the the metadata from the uh, stu- uh, stuff, metadata from the site. 
So unless it's a very good fake, and I could have sworn I clicked on it to make sure it was good, but it's not there now. But the Forbes.com had a story, Sorrow, Global Warming Alarmist, the Earth is Cooling. And as I think about it, it's possible that that might be some type of forgery. That headline sounds a little harsh for Forbes. You know, they would probably say, you know, they'd probably say something like, when everyone's expecting the earth, you know, the earth is warming, it's actually cooling or something like that. It wouldn't have been so, uh, but nobody, oh, excuse me. Gosh, that's real pleasant, huh? Nobody uh, has pointed out this yet, so I, maybe it just happened. But I also have links uh, to the, not by ice, but by fire, dot info, I think it is. I have to find it on there. Which is a good Ice Age Now dot info. No, I'm sorry. The book was not by ice but by fire. Old Art Bell guest, uh, and it turns out pretty good, pretty uh, on the news, uh, good on the news. But I want to mention something. People are posting. I get the impression that people are posting the Earth is cooling stuff and and, got, and like going, aha, uh-huh, you global warming people, ha <laughs> ha. See, it's really cooling. Hey, that's not good either. <laughs> That's not good news that it's cooling. I mean, perhaps the dire death of Earth as projected by the climate change global Earth people, uh, it's not as bad, I guess. But still, you want to check out the last uh, cooling period we had. They call it the Maunder Minimum, also known as the Little Ice Age. I think it was something like 1200, 1300 A.D., it lasted for like 25 years. I mean, crop. I mean, people were planting late in the season. The crops were terrible. You had hunger, famine, and whatnot. And depending how bad it is, you people start moving south. You know, and I got a, a buddy who's up in uh, Yellowknife, Northwest Territories, and God bless him. It's bad enough in the winter up there. And, uh, bad enough if the little ice age comes. It they'll be frozen. Let to come dig them out when it melts. Uh, so, uh, and problems are happening this year. I mean, right now it's still cold out and it's May. It was 43 this morning where I'm at, uh, uh, Fahrenheit, uh, which is, I mean, it's not totally, it's not like world record says or, or local record setting, but it's on the low end, you know? Uh, so I just wanted to mention that when people talk about the earth really cooling and there's almost kind of a glee in it that, aha. See, those global warming uh, people are wrong. Well, it's, it's still not good news. Uh, also, I, I bumped into a uh, uh, video by uh, wearechange.org. Uh, apparently, David Icke has a film out. Well, actually, he's not doing it. It's about him and his life, and it's being censored like crazy. And uh, some of the, the telltale things were... Does it make, you know, questions, does it make David Icke look good? Yeah, well, then we don't want it. You know, I mean, what, what is that for a reason? That's ridiculous. I mean, back in the day when pornography was being attacked, and you might think, okay, you know, good reason. One of the arguments that they had against it was, you know, freedom of speech. You don't like it, then don't, don't watch it or whatever, you know. And, uh, you know, here we are today where it is uh, – it it has been. Larry Flint has forecasted the true uh, the future about uh, censorship going, just starting out. Let's say in pornography, which you know I don't appreciate, but then moving into a political or or religious uh, censorship, which is what's happening now. Uh, so, also uh, one American News Network. I've talked about them before. If you have them on your cable system, I recommend it. If you want, you can get it streaming through cloud tv it's like five bucks a month you uh also can uh go to youtube they have a youtube channel where select reports are put up publicly and i really recommend you doing some some portion of that because they're reporting some good stuff you're not seeing anywhere else (laughs) man 
Uh, and uh, so I have a, I put up, a, I'll put these links uh, afterwards. Uh, Mexican residents are calling their government to deport illegal immigrants for what chaos they're causing in their in their neighborhoods. Yeah, you, of course you're going to see that on MSNBC, etc. Right? Uh, so, boy, what a, you know, what a surprise, huh? Also, what this uh, uh, apparently Alphabet, which is the parent company of Google, is getting. Uh, Losing billions of dollars, perhaps traced to this censorship stuff. Their income is based on clicks. So if you delete a popular YouTube channel that's bringing in revenue, Google will then lose their revenue because it won't be bringing in revenue anymore. You know. So uh, what's happening is they're losing billions. In the past, the argument for well, I just mentioned pornography, and the argument for lack of censorship in any way was uh it's just business you know? but now all of a sudden when you're talking about trump and uh criticisms of syria and whatnot sharia and whatnot you're now getting censorship uh, and they're they're actually cutting off their nose despite their face so another article there uh there was a graphic posted that was pretty good uh i republican eric uh swalwell not Republican, Representative Eric Swalwell, uh, said this quote, apparently. Do you know how many times the word woman is mentioned in the Constitution? Zero. That's unacceptable. And so somebody had uh, added, Republican Swalwell, do you know how many times the word man is mentioned in the Constitution? Zero. (laughs) Ignorance is unacceptable. But it's not ignorance. This is propaganda. He, uh, I'm sure he's not... He didn't go to the Constitution and just have this all of a sudden go, oh, you know what? There's no women in there. Look, there's men, but no women. You know, they, they didn't do it. It's just it's just talking points. It's just all propaganda. And I, I noticed I'm sharing some links that are disappearing, so this is really happening. An interesting um, article, it is, uh, I forgot the name of the YouTube channel. I'll have the link on there. Uh, the lady who does it, his last name is uh, Shakespeare, which I think is kind of funny. Uh, she has, I think, an Australian accent. I'm not really good with that. It's British Australian. I'm not really sure, but anyway, they uh, they have a YouTube channel. Oh, let me just click on it for a second. Uh, declassified, the e- e- Epoch Times, and uh, there's an article uh, there. Oh, well, she's she's reading a series of articles, uh, summarizing them in this report that Rod Rosenstein might be a hero in this. Uh, upcoming battle that Trump was the one who appointed him, and it, this might have been along those Q lines where they were saying Mueller was working with Trump and all this. This might fit into that kind of narrative. Uh, so it was, you know, I'm I'm a little skeptical of these things, but there are she brings up points, or the artic, the person in the article brings up several points, which okay, you know, we'll see. And I passed it along for people. Uh, I'll get into that and other stuff later. Uh, yeah, I'm going to pass a lot of this stuff. Uh, I'll put the links, you know, underneath for some of these things. I, cause it's, that's not, I don't need to necessarily go through it. One thing you might consider is the good old fashioned RSS feed. If you have a website, you can create an RSS feed to all your videos on YouTube. And for that matter, your posts, I believe on Facebook. I haven't, I'm not a Facebook aficionado. I think you could save the link to make it permanent. And then you have a permalink to it, and you can create an RNSS feed that people can subscribe to, and that when your information comes out, it do, it doesn't go through the YouTube uh, arithmetic uh, arithmet- uh, arithmetic arithmetic I just invented a word there arithmetic. I like it. Uh, al- algorithms uh, that are screening out things. So you know, look into that. It's good old RNS feed. RSS feed was a, l- a long way before the internet. Well, I shouldn't say that, that that strongly, but it was in the early days, if nothing else. I think it goes back to uh, Fidonet was the basis of it, where you would get subscription to various feeds that were sent around. But anyway, RSS feed, I actually have it on feedthroughthefireradio.com. It's built in. If you scroll all the way down, you'll see the little dot with the co- concurved al- lines going around it. It looks like it's broadcasting, so to speak. 
you can uh, use an RSS feed to get everything I post on Faith to the Fire Radio. It does have a feed associated with it, so you can uh, you can do that as well. That's built into actually anybody who's got a WordPress, it's built into it. Uh, so it's it's not that. I mean, in the case of WordPress, the functionality of it is built into the software, but you could do it completely on your own with your own website. Just create an XML, you know, in the proper, you know, they have RSS uh, feed creators out there. They're free, you know. You just have to cr- uh, do it in a, in, a, in a, follow the, the protocols. And then people can then click on it and it'll pull up their reader in most cases uh, browsers will connect as an RSS reader if you don't have one specifically. So I want to stress that in these days of um, uh, also, uh, I guess this is a good uh, a good one. Uh, you know, the epinephrine uh, shot for is like you know, hundreds of dollars and nobody can afford it. But the EpiPen, there is an affordable way to do it. What this person talks about is you get a subscription for the Adrena Click, but have him make sure he checks the sus- substitution allowed, and have your pharmacy order the generic of it from Lineage Therapeutics. This person saw it uh, where at Costco where you can get it. Patients pay ten dollars instead of hundreds. So I just like to put that on because that's uh, you know you you get bit by Lucinda's uh, B. You got bee problems. If you get bit by a honeybee, you know, she's dead. So, all right. Um, and it, that's it for that. I think I've, I, there's some other articles. I, I guess, you know, I'll swap them. If you want, I've been, I've been double posting out on mines and Gab. Now I'm trying to keep up on that. Cause uh, at some point, whether I uh, am, am forced to, or simply decide to, uh, leave Facebook and Twitter, you know, those would be a good backup. I'm noticing a lot more traffic on Gab, and people are finding me, so it uh, it's apparently, you know, it's catching on. Though, you know, with James Woods being gone, he, he, I don't know if he'll catch on to Gab. I don't know if he'll just fight it, but, I mean, you know, people are going, and there is a good uh, place to, to go on it. So let me minimize this. And again, this has kind of been thrown together uh, because of stuff happening here. Uh, I had a dog sit earlier. My Lucinda went out with the party plan that she had with the friends, and uh, we pretty much some you know we pretty much have to have have a dog sitter. We got one dog who's so kind of psychophobic when we're alone, and the other one's blind. He wanders around and gets stuck in things. So, but when I got out here, then I had all these buzz problems. And I was just going to switch it back to a different way. And then all of a sudden, wait a minute, I got isolators in here. And I'm like, this is driving me nuts. This week, I finally got my phono tube preamp for my phonograph. Phonograph. Well, phonograph. A record player. A turntable. I already got, finally got that fixed after having it for a couple of years and having a hum in it. Finally found online. Thank God for the internet. Somebody had posted about when they put this together. The two uh, grounds were soldered together for left and right, The uh, and they shouldn't do that. It creates a ground loop, and it did. And when I fixed it, according to the instructions, fine. So that was a beautiful thing. So I'm, I'm like, haunted by hum. Hum dinger. So uh, let me go to this next thing. I don't, uh, and again, if you're listening to this and it sounds weird, let me know. I mean, I, I'm trying up here. And right now I'm listening in their headphones, and it sounds fine, but I'm not listening to the post-compressed uh, MP3 file. I'm listening to the live feed going in, and it's quiet and fine. But then again, you know, it's always something. I should just give up. You know, if you had like a, if I had like an iPad and did it, that sounds fine because it's all... It's all in one, you know, but I got an outboard system. I have stereos involved in it and compressors and all this stuff. And it's almost like stuff used to be really nice, and now it's a pain in the neck. But anyway, uh, on to my uh, topic. Uh, Shane is texting and saying something good. Okay, well, good. Uh, That's good. Maybe the copy it saves on my side is the problem. 
Uh, so it doesn't save a WAV file. I wish it would, but it saves a compressed file. And if I'm doing a pre-record, I can do it on my own professional software, and it sounds fine, and I can upload it. But if I'm doing a live, I got to use their thing. So now, I, I mentioned I got I have uh, I, wanna, I was going to say rules for finding truth, or but it's really guiding principles in the search of truth. And I t- like to use the term reality rather than truth, because we've gotten, even though to me truth is not relative either true or not, but there is varying degrees of, of a revealing of the truth so that as you know more and as you keep gravitating true for truth, it becomes truer, which doesn't make sense with the word true and it's basically a binary uh, on off, you know, one zero. Uh, so I like the term reality because we can be, we can observe reality, and as we observe it more clearly and understand more principles, it it becomes richer in detail, and it becomes more uh, experienceable. Experienceable? I just I just make words up along the way, but you know what I'm saying. And so over, you know, this goes back to my days when I first started. I was the, uh, teaching Bible school in a fundamental Baptist church, and I went through a, a personal uh, crisis in my in, in the life with. Uh, divorce, and then, of course, the, I have to leave the church and so on. And so I was in a position, uh, by went, going through that whole little cycle, I was in a pretty big of a mess. A lot of the stuff that I had held, it just didn't hold up, hold water. And this is the problem is when you have a hard paradigm, when you're, when you're not, when, when, you're, when you're off of reality, you're in a, either a delusion, which to me is when somebody, uh, when I don't know, there's illusion and delusion, and I guess there's a technicality between the words. But when you are deluded, eventually it's like a boat going off course. At first, you don't realize it; it doesn't matter. And uh, at some point, you get far enough, and you know you could then be in trouble. And that's where the idea is: eventually, real reality comes in and slaps you in the head with a two-by-four, if I can borrow from Dr. Reed Louise, excellent little book, you should read it, uh, Avoiding the Cosmic Two-by-Four. It'll hit, you know, and when it does hit, it's bad. And the farther that you're away from reality, when reality encroaches upon your delusion or illusion, the more trouble it is. Uh, it's, it's, it's bad. <laughs> and, and so I've kind of been there. And, and as I kind of pieced everything back together, again, I started from zero. And like, is there a God? You know, is the Bible true? Does it have anything in it? I mean, is is anything anything? Even in science. That's why I don't just, you know, when somebody goes, oh, it's science. It's done. It's, it's, there still has to be a, a level of accountability for being something being real. And so what I uh, had jotted down, and actually it's the first time I really did this, because these have been inside me. I've not articulated them to this degree. And perhaps I can do a better job when I think about it. Uh, you know, a lot of times the second time around you get more verbose. It doesn't get any better. It just gets more complicated. So I, I did this one off the cuff. One of the first things I learned, because when I first started, I went into looking into the New Age. I went looking at these other things. And I found these people who were really intelligent in there. And then all of a sudden I got whacked by that 2 by 4 again as the as the hypocrites, hypocritical stuff, this you know, self-righteousness, the contradictions hit me. And when I brought them up in an instant, like, wait a minute, you, this is not working with this and that. Then I was, you know, uh, they had to discount me. But what, what are the number one on my list here to come to my mind is everyone is wrong to some degree. Uh, so if you're, if you're one of the people who think that you really have it right, you're, you're a big candidate for dilute disillusion, disillusionment. disillusionment. Uh, it is, you can actually, you know, the old phrase, drinking your own Kool-Aid. This is well, someone who thinks that they're right and everybody else is wrong or that nobody else can be right. I mean, you're, you're setting yourself up. I mean, if, if, you're in a, so that if you're in a fundamental religion, you're already there. I've been there. It doesn't mean that, you know, Aspects of that religion are true. No, that's not what I'm saying. It doesn't mean God or Jesus. None of that stuff. It doesn't mean it's not true. It's just that the the human creation of that religious sect 
is going to be uh, ego, humanly based, and will corrupt the spiritual based part of it. And uh, you know, so as as hard as one is. Now, on the other hand, it doesn't mean anything goes. Oh well, you know, everyone's wrong. Anyways, eh, what does it matter? No, that's not it. The first one is geared for the um, the person to uh, realize that if 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 somebody who <coughs> somebody may have something to offer, no matter what, say you know you're you're a PhD and this and that and the other thing, and then somebody comes up with alternative. Oh, no. Why did that come from? Uh, alternative uh, way. Looking at the, like, for example, the pyramids. If you're if you're stuck on the the timeline in traditional Egyptology, and then all of a sudden people come along, Grant Han- Hancock and uh, John uh, John West and all these others uh, who come up with different timelines. If you don't look into it and go, "Oh, let's check it out," in in and then just kind of block it off. See, this is what I'm talking about: is uh, the people who are the experts are wrong some degree somewhere there's some there they have a lot right and they have a buildable structure that stands as long as you don't use political power or force to have it stand so again number one everyone is wrong to some degree two uh we cannot expect to know or understand reality in its totality as it's beyond us but reality reality manifests truthfully in principles that are all true even when the uh, when data and understanding increases. So uh, if you're if you're looking at, I, I'm going to try and come up with an example which might not be a good one. But you know, when I was in college about atoms and all this, the valence shells and all that, they had them being rather relatively uh, st- relatively discrete. And then as I went into higher chemistry levels. It would find out that well, actually, they're not discrete. Uh, but uh, but I said, why do you why do you teach the other stuff? Well, it gets you to understand uh, principles, and then we, you know, and I was kind of mad then, but it makes sense now. You have to, you know, you teach a person to, to crawl and and walk and run and then you know jog the marathon. And when you when it under, when it comes to understanding reality, you're going to learn as much, much as you can within the framework of your own understandings. But you still could be true. You can learn truth. And you can be on the right track. You learn enough to understand the right kind of direction toward reality in, in whatever you're looking at. But it doesn't have to be articulated like an expert. And, and even those experts have been overturned. I mean, look, look, at, look at physics throughout the years and look at other things along the way. People thought it was this, then it was that. They used to bleed you when, uh, when, it was, when you had bad blood with leeches and so forth. And then they turned it around. But it turns out sometimes leeches are good. Because of a local infection, you see, I mean, you know, I kind of got the idea there, but well, actually, you know, you know, and as you, as you are open to learning things, what will happen is you'll get more information and okay. And then, you know, and so, but if you expect to be able to go, well, you know what, I'm going to learn all of this stuff and then I'll know everything there is to know about this. That's a delusion, illusion or what have you. And, and a thing that first thing that I came up with realize that truth again truth and reality i'm using interchangeable though i think reality is a better word has no contradictions so if you have a contradiction there's an error somewhere and i'll never forget that was my if you go back to the early days of feet to the fire the road to truth via the path of non-contradiction which is a little tongue twistery but uh the idea is that you know you're going to find truth by going along this not, you know, non-contradiction pathway. Contradictions equal, I got a problem, and you have to look at the information. And so I'm, I'm going to read the book Atlas Shrugs, which has been talked about as being the, you know, recruiting book for the Illuminati, a lot of negative stuff about it. So naturally, I'm going to want to read it because I got to see things for myself. I mean, I read Mein Kampf. I didn't turn into Hitler. In fact, I understand the problems with Hitler, but I also understand some of the nation, nationalistic stuff uh, that worked, but got completely overshadowed by the all the horror, right? So it, there's no book. It's like, oh, I'm not going to read that because it might be an infection. I might get, you know. Uh, so uh, in, in in the first chapter, there's three three separate, uh, what would you call it, uh, sections. The first section of the book is 
there are no contradictions in truth. A lack of contradiction, you know, was the, was the word they used. I'm like, oh, that's, that's what I say. You know, and then I all of a sudden get, you know, that immediate kind of, oh, I'm talking like Illuminati talk, you know, well, you know. I read through it and I, I learned a lot of stuff about it. There are good points in there and, of course, there's delusional points. But if you want to find truth, if you have a contradiction, don't just hide it. Don't just put it away. In fact, the aberrant information, um, is that the right word, aberrant, uh, uh, anomalous, the anomalous data is like the most important data because it can be that those pieces that get you to change the overall, let's call it formula or theorem or view to be more right include, and there won't be contradictions. And, and, and so, uh, when one sees these contradictions, you can say, well, you know, you, you, you keep them there. You, you, you remember them and you say, look, this is the, here's what we got for our reasons and principles. There are some contradictions and you know, it's our working model. In fact, that's, you'll hear me use the terms like, well, this is my working model for, and if something else comes along that is better, I'm going to have to cough again. Hold on. Let me, uh, here. Uh, if, uh, when something else comes along that helps you focus or fine tune that, that information, well, then now you're, 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 you're getting closer, you have a better view of reality. And so that uh, anomalous information is actually your friend. When things don't work out, uh, th- that's, those, are, those thorns, those pains in the necks, are actually trying to uh, prod you in the right direction. And I'll give you an example, sometimes you could be 180 degrees off, and it doesn't mean that you're wrong, uh, especially in mathematics. I remember when uh, b- being big into this whole space thing since I was a kid, when Voyager went to uh, Saturn, their mathematics showed where the densest spots of the rings were and the lightest spots. But when they actually got there and observed them, it was the exact opposite. The densest parts were the lightest parts. And they were shocked. So they had to go back, look at their data. Oh, here we go. And they, and they saw the, the error in their mathematics. Now, if that was done today, <laughs> like, like those... the climate change and whatnot, it would be like, oh, no, no, it's the, no, it, it's wrong. We'll have to, obviously we're, the cameras were off and, you know, they would change the data to fit it or, or so it seems. So lack of contradiction. We all have biases and this is number four, we all have biases and prejudices we must find to see accurately. You know, Jesus, uh, Jesus phrase, you know, take the log out of your eye before you take the speck out of your brothers. Well, there's a lot in there, but the simple, the simple thing is if you want to see clearly, you have to make sure that you have good vision. And if you, if you are holding, uh, problematic principles, as you look out into reality, you're going to see things askew. Just like if you had a bad prescription in your lens, or if you had filtering, color filtering on it or what have you. When you look out in that, your data will be colored, literally, by the color in the glass. So you have to go, and this is where, you know, uh, Socrates, one of my faves, has the line, the unexamined life is not worth living. Or the greatest folly is saying that you know something when you don't. You think you know it and you don't. That's the greatest folly. And those are the things where a lot of self-examination. So if you're going to go out and find truth, one of the things you got to be ready for is self-examination. What part am I playing in me not seeing the truth? And a lot of people don't want to do that. I, you see, I have the benefit, let's say, of crashing, having, you know, some type of a breakdown. I, mean, I, I don't know what a nervous breakdown is like, but I had some type of version of it when all this stuff, all these illusions I was juggling crashed down on me. And so uh, I had no choice but to, to redo it. And when I, when I was doing this, when I learned, I said, you know what? I'm not going to put anything in too hard a stone too fast because it's hard to break that stone than it is to move the mud, <laughs> so to speak. So the, um, where was it? No, out of prejudice. So you have to examine yourself 
uh, to your own ego biases, your fears. Hey, if I, if this is wrong, then what? I mean, of course, religion is a great spot because if you're wrong, you're damned. Right? So that's one thing I learned is that the good news that Jesus brought was God loves you, you know, regardless of who you are, and wants to take you wherever you're at toward the God to the right reality, to the right way of seeing things. So it's never too late. If I can quote Steppenwolf songs, it's never too late to start all over again. It's just that when, you know, if you're like some big shot somewhere with authority and power, it, to start over again means you're getting thrown out of your group and uh, people don't want to do that. So, well, you know, or uh, so it's important to realize that when you go out and looking at something, you're going to... Uh, looking through color glasses and you, you, along the way you need along the way. So one thing is about when you, when I open up to God and say, I want to know truth, I don't care what it is. I want to know what the truth is because I can't afford to be building my paradigm on BS. Right? I need to have it on solid rock. Now I understand as I learn and grow, the rock shifts a bit to become more centered properly. Okay. I understand that, but I, that's why I want to have it be kind of, formed so that as I move it around, it, the whole building doesn't fall down as I have to change it. And as things start to solidify over time, you can be a little bit more uh, rest assured on it. And the w- reason why I'm not worried about that is I, I know God loves me and that God knows I'm really trying and I'm not just trying to BS my way through things and I'm going to make mistakes and I'm going to do stuff stupid. I'm going to be in a in a bad mood one day, and I'm not going to, you know, and 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 harm may come of it, and 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 I'll have to deal with it. I'll have to, you know, it'll be my, but all during all of that, you don't lose God. And Jesus was that, uh, his teachings and his actions are that manifesting bridge, to that to to uh, kind of put a bridge on that. It's actually a fall. It's also it's actually a delusion that we're separated from God. Sin doesn't separate us from God. Sin gives the illusion master, Satan and his people, to give that illusion of away from God. And, of course, the greatest of the illusion masters are the most hardcore fundamentalists, whether it be Muslim or Christian, who uh, come up with really hardcore stuff. Of course, Muslims have Christians beat nowadays because a lot of the Christians have been tamed over the years. uh, But a lot of the uh, old, old school Muslim stuff is pretty harsh pretty violent and uh, a segment of it, you know, of it. And I'm telling you, I've been a Christian, uh, a fundamental Christian is the independent Baptist that you give them half a chance. They'd be tearing down the high places, quote unquote, again, and they'd be stoning the, uh, the heretics. It's just that uh, they've been, uh, you know, lived, lived in underneath this constitutional Republic for a while and uh, calm down. All right. I'm getting off. Uh, all right, truth, number five, truth, again, reality, truth, um, you know, is not a popular consensus, but it is, oh boy, I can't remember writing now. Oh, I see, I see. But it is, whether anyone sees it or understands it. All right, so truth, reality is not a popular consensus, but it is. In and of itself, it exists. Truth is, reality is, whether anyone sees or understands it. I mean, you know, gravity, we can go throughout history where no one knew about this. I mean, they didn't even know there was air, you know. Uh, They had to do scientific experiments to prove there was air and therefore air pressure and and so on. But it was there, whether they knew it or not. So the same type of thing is, is that just because you don't like the reality, and if you get enough people around you to say that it's not true, I mean, I would use the example of this whole transgender stuff. There's a problem there. If people who uh, want to do that, there's a problem. It's not normal and okay. All right? I'm not saying you stone them or nothing. I'm just saying. But they're trying to make it be like it's okay. So now they're trying to get kids to trans- transgender at all. It's ridiculous. I mean, I can't, you know, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, this, this would not have been tolerated but because of the slide uh, down, especially in the, in the, in the uh, media. Propaganda. So, truth is not a popular consensus. And I would add in there, it's also not a personal, <clears throat> well, it's my truth. But it doesn't fly. 
it's not my, not your reality. You can't make your own reality and exist in an area with other, other people's reality. You know, that's, that's you, I mean, you could do that, but then the real reality will crush some, uh, crush you along the way somewhere. And I think I may throw this in as a little, uh, my own personal observations. We're in a time where reality is being revealed and therefore the unreality is being revealed. And, uh, it's going to be, it's a bumpy, uh, bumpy, crazy time now because we're having the reality come in. It's like a big ship coming in on a, a boat and it just cuts you in half. There's no, the reality, the boat comes in and it doesn't even know you're there. There's no pushback. It just goes through you like nothing because reality doesn't need to have a structure in order to propel it. It just is. And uh, so there. For six, if something is true or real, odds are someone else has beheld it before, even if it's only in an analog. And what, what I mean is, if you just figured something out and you go like, wow, holy cow, I just figured out this big truth. This is like, no one's ever said it before in history. Oh my gosh. That is a, that is a, 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 that is a problem for the ego to go just explode. Like I'm chosen by God. I'm special, whatever. People stumble upon reality. People are given reality. Their eyes are opened as, as a, in grace. It's given as a gift. Uh, it's, it's found it's, it's because of hard work. It's done by accident. Uh, so the idea is that if you find it, odds are someone else has said something similar or perhaps not as articulate and not as uh, a high in resolution in the description and understanding. Uh, so that's another, another problem. Is the biggest thing about this is the ego or what I call the reverse ego, which is either going to be I'm better than you or I you know, or I'm upset with you because I'm not better than you. <clears throat> and it, that, that, that emotion drives people into a delusion, illusion. And of course it all leads to violence. Eventually, you know, violence to oneself, suicide, violence to someone else, murder would be the two extremes. So, uh, so what I, when I've done it, I've, I've done a bunch of stuff where I was doing Bible studies and I found this stuff out. And go, oh, wow. You know, and it's pretty dramatic. And then I do some research and found out that this guy back in, you know, uh, 300 AD said a different version of what I found. It wasn't exactly the same, but it was a, you know, a similar principle. And I go, oh, you see? Because truth isn't laying there like no one else can see it ever. Maybe some many people have seen it and, and never had access to share it with the future, you know. They realized these principles, didn't write it down, didn't talk about it a lot. You know, maybe they talked about it, other people took credit or whatever. And uh, so when you found something, you, 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 whatever you're find, whenever you're doing this reality search, you have to make sure that you don't get lost in it. You don't want to be intimidated by it. You may be afraid by it, but you don't want to become, I am king. You know, I am the God. Because that's, that's exactly what the ego wants. Eagle wants excuse to be God. And a lot of fundamental religions give it the excuse. You're the chosen one. And it's like, wow, I'm the chosen one. I'm cool. No, if anything, the chosen one means you are extremely humble and grateful for being chosen. I'm just, I'm just using, like, the proper methodology of it. Um, so, got only one more here. Uh, I guess I kind of bled into that uh, with this. Is God probably hasn't chosen you to reveal the never before truth. So I guess it's really kind of a subtext of the other one. Uh, because again, the ego, and I see, I see I naturally blended into it. The ego is the enemy. Ego or the reverse ego is the enemy. That is where Satan, and whatever Satan is, multi dimensional creature, a race, Whatever, you know, I don't want to get into the details. Uh, 
you know, because a legalist wants you to talk a lot so they can tongue twist you in details. But principal truth is very small, is very terse, and the application of it is very rich. I mean, look, look at the Sermon on the Mount. Holy cow. He's, he's, he's given off one-liners that are like, boom. You could do whole studies on one-liners, all the applications of them, because that's real truth. That's why when people hear Jesus talk, they're like, oh, wow, this guy, he teaches with authority. He doesn't teach with authority like he stands up there and goes, hey, you, I'm talking to you. I'm the man. You know, not authority like like a uh, uh, power-based authority. They're, they're looking at him like he speaks with authority, meaning that experiential understanding, depth of understanding and principle, so that when he puts a sentence together, and gives it to you, it's like, it's it's a little package. And as you open it up, it's like, wow, you know? So that's the kind of uh, authority that he taught with. So when you go look at his principles, there's not this whole long, drawn 200 pages to explain the principles. They're bam, bam, bam. And what's good is when you get real truth like that, when it goes inside you, and if you're looking for truth, if you're saying, like, I, God, I want to know truth, show me, God's working with you. You have the, the, the Holy Spirit or however you want to phrase it, that God part in you that's going to be, you know, give, communicating in a very subtle way because it, it wants you to keep, keep your eyes humble and fixed and focused so that, um, I mean, one thing about being with God, you don't have to worry about getting your fair share. <laughs> you're going to get... Push down, running over. What is that uh, verse about the basket? You're, you know, if you lend a basket, you'll get it back filled, running over, pushed down, compra- compacted. God pays uh, any kind of debt. So, like when you say, I don't sacrificing for God, believe me, in the long run, it'll be like a little the sacrifice, which is could be formidable in the flesh in your life. You know, as a, as a living human, it could be formidable, but in the context of what uh, it would be, it, it's huge. So uh, when I went through and was learning these things, of course, what happens is, and this started out when I was teaching over there, because when I when I said I would teach the adult class, I said, I don't want to use any, any readers, any teachers. I want to be able to read the Bible, praying to God, and I use studies, Greek and Hebrew, to understand what the words meant, historical context, you know, stuff like that. But I didn't use commentaries. I wanted to be able to find out what it means and, and teach this, you know, share this, I guess would be a better word. And I was willing to give the pastor first look, you know, I'm not going to try and come in there. And, and uh, he went along, all right, go ahead. You know, his wife was in my class, so I'm sure it would get back to him. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there was a lot of challenging things I, I found that didn't match up to a lot of the common doctrinal uh, uh, kind of the, Cavalier, grossly applied uh, sayings, and when um, you know when I would bring it up, I mean, you could see there was a, like an uncomfortableness in a way where, wait a minute, this is not like we're normally hearing. But then again, it had truth. You know, it's like, well, yeah, you know, and of course, that a lot of people don't like that because they're uh, they're uh, you know they they want they, they, you know you want to have. You want to high five, especially when you get into religion. You want to get in there, and you know well, what's great. What's great, or what's not great about like Christianity, for example, is you can go in there and a pastor could talk about hell and damnation, but you're saved by grace. So you you get you get the beating, the pre the pre a pre up to the beating, and then there's the release because oh, but I'm saved by grace. Yeah, that's true. You know, I'm I'm not saying it's not true. But I'm also saying, and I've done uh, uh, studies, I actually still have my two studies I did back when I was uh, in the Baptist church that I put up for download, and I will again, if you like, that show uh, that your afterlife, the quality of your afterlife is affected by things done in this life, you know, even though you're saved. So it's it's not like a uh, fire escape to heaven is the old phrase uh, fire escape from hell I should say, it's not how it works. It's all by grace, but um, how you want to be more like God. In fact, if you can substitute that, how you want to 
how dedicated are you to finding real truth, real reality? Because God, of course, is the end of the all, all reality, all truth. God created the universe in and of himself. So God is like in the universe and outside the universe at the same time, which, of course, would be a violation of the laws of physics, but that's because we don't, we're not up to God's par and understand how it's possible. But, you know, when you get out of multi-dimensions, it becomes possible. Even with, uh, you know, the multi-dimensional theories. The problem, what all, I got new, somebody new here? Amelia? God, I hope I'm saying this wrong, right? Because I, I have a dyslexia, and when I read words that I'm not familiar with, you know, it's it's all hell can break loose. So I'm still looking at Anita. I have to look at it and kind of like say, I have to read it again like I'm a kindergartner sounding it out because I'm just not familiar with the word. If his name was Fred, that'd be fine. <laughs> so, uh, so that, uh, this, you know what I just said, this stuff here, this is really important. It, it's, uh, I mean, these things, if you follow these principles, and I, you know, and I'm just like Joe Blow here, but because I found these things along the way, I've learned so much stuff. I, I, uh, 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 I, I, I urge people to ask me questions about my theological understanding of God and the Bible and all that, because it all jives. I don't have contradictions. At least I haven't found it. So if you come up with a question that puts me in a conundrum, that's actually a good learning experience to come up with. But one of the things I have said, I'm not going to limit myself based on a line of doctrine that is taught by a church, or that includes science for that matter. If you want to look at the global warming aspects, I want reality. And I already know that reality, God is love, and God is the creator of all things. And God is so, so cares about everyone that he himself will reach into space and time and do whatever it takes to help you on your journey to find him. You know, and Jesus would be an example. So, that, so if you know that, if you have that inside gnosko, experiential knowledge of it, then, then it's not, you're not scared about the afterlife. And they, and they want you to be scared about the afterlife because it's control. You can do what they say because, well, you know, I'll just do what they say. But, you know, it's, it's not going to be what they say that counts. It's going to be what you, your, your understanding. So if you're doing things that you know are contradictory or not true, but it's just safe, you don't want to cause trouble, you're a hypocrite. You're, you're, even though you might not be evil, as uh, some of the people in the, um, uh, if you go back to the Pharisees and whatnot, you're still living hypocritically. So if you look, if you look at Jesus' teachings, in fact, I, I probably will do this: is come up with Jesus lists of no nos. It's not going to be don't swear and don't. That's not the. That's not the point. The point is like hypocritical. You can be perfectly non swearing, nice person and hypocrite, or you can be kind of a crude cussing, whatever but honest and uh, uh, loving and helping your neighbor and loving your God and, and actually be, you know, Jesus was the friend of sinners because the sinners, while they had sin, they, Jesus sensed their authenticness in their sin. And in the same breath, you can't get all ego about it. This is why, you know, just as I am, you know, and, uh, uh, Amazing grace with a wretch like me and all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's fine. But God's like, yeah, you're a wretch. Okay, let's get over it and get on to the good stuff. I want you to learn about reality, about about the universe that I created and the infinity life that waits ahead of you. If you follow these principles, you'll be in the best position when that comes. And if you go anti it, well, it's going to be tough. Uh, so this is what... Uh, and this, this applies to religion, it applies to science. I mean, the reason why I don't go for the global warming is not because, quote, I'm a Republican, because I'm not. I'm not an anythingism. I'm not an anything. I mean, I'll say I'm a Christian, but in terms of what Christian means to other people, that statement is kind of, like, irrelevant. I study the teachings of Christ, Jesus Christ, and as far as I'm concerned, a lot of the churches don't. <laughs> so, you know, 
and they call themselves Christian. So, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's very interesting. The reality of things does not have the title. John the Baptist did not fit the character of your normal kind of priest or whatever. He's out there what is, with the locusts and the honey and the lead, leather belt or fur belt and all that stuff, right? Uh, well, it didn't fit the norm, the norm on it. And it wasn't because he was like that that he was chosen. It's because of his heart. And what's what's good is God with you know God with a little uh, wink knows that when you bring someone in who's got a pure heart and understanding for God, but the outside doesn't match the st- the stereotypical norm, it, God likes that. It's like it's going to shake things up a bit. You know, God God is like an old man and a uh, you know a young man too. I mean, God is not a man, but I mean, you know, this is what's great about God is everything. Anyway, back to this point here. I'll I'll read them briefly again. Number one, everyone is wrong to some degree. Number two, you cannot expect to know and understand the reality in its total as it's beyond us, but reality manifests truthfully in principles that are true even when more data and understanding comes. So as you know more, you can understand more, but you're on the right path. And so you're wrong, you just get more right. More correct, I guess the word would be. For three, truth, reality, has no contradictions. So therefore, if you find contradictions, you have to rearrange some of your data here because re- reality is, is real, and there's, you can't con- contradict real. Or we all have biases and prejudices. We must find these to see correctly. When you're looking through dirty glasses or colored glasses, you're going to obscure the reality that you're seeking and and investigating. Truth reality is number five. Truth reality is not a popularity consensus, but it is whether or not anyone recognizes it, whether anyone knows it, whether anyone agrees in it. It's real in and of itself. Number six, if something is true or real, uh, the odds are someone else has beheld it in some shape or form over time. Uh, so, uh, as a, I guess it's 6A, and this would be 6B rather than 7, so God probably hasn't chosen you to reveal a never-before reality, so double-check. So either someone has said it before, and you're improving on what they're saying because you could see it in a bigger context, more information, what have you, and or you're wrong. <laughs> so you got to make sure you get a double-check. And, I, you know, again, it's, it's my two favorite uh, people. You know, if you want to call them, a, you're going to take who the two people you look up to. You know, Jesus, of course, and the other would be uh, Socrates, from what I know of them. I mean, I, yeah, it's slaves and whatever else. But, again, that's the, cult, the, the culture at the time. It was acceptable to do that. In fact, you know, people in the oh, by, Bible were slaves. They, servants, slaves, inter, you know, in fact, the funny how you look at the word behind it in Hebrew, and it's, it's life. Because uh, they had a, you know, they, they try to, and it's true, they try to say, well, you know, back then you could sell yourself to somebody because you can't afford it. You know, it's like getting a job. You're signing on to a lifelong contract and your pay is room and board. All right. Okay, I, I'll, I'll buy that. But as time goes on, it could be done better, which it did. Uh, actually, some might argue. So that is what I wanted to uh, say. Uh, hopefully that will help. I think what I can try and do is when I write this up, now I'm, I'm not going to write this up today cause I got to get to bed soon. I got to get up early for, for work. So I might not be able to put out the text, uh, right away on this and the links and all of that. So probably have to do that tomorrow. I can do that tomorrow. So just, just letting you know, kind of, kind of, I, I kind of feel bad. I was kind of like, just kind of fell into this today. I wanted to do this. I was thinking about this throughout the week. But again, the uh, the, the reality of life. And of course, I know, I know from the, uh, the aspect, the, e- the uh, evil influences on the world don't want this information out. I mean, not that, you know, 80 million people are going to hear this from me, but hey, even one. Someone goes, hey, you know, it's a good idea or whatever, and they grow from it, they help from it. They find they find some type of help in their life from it. It's a win, and uh, wins aren't appreciated by the dark side. Uh, so 
and almost didn't do the thing, I said, yeah, I'm going to do it. Even if, it, if I, even if I do it kind of disheveled, I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, so I, I, I kind of let you know about that. I'm also uh, looking into proto or protonmail.com as a Gmail substitute. And so uh, it looks pretty decent. Trouble is I can't pull it from my email. I mean, you have to use their app, but it's because it's encrypted point to point, and they don't even have the encryption keys, so they say. Uh, so I can understand why they can't just pull it. You can forward it to another email, but then once it leaves them, you're on your own as far as, you know, being uh, people being able to look into it and so on. I mean, I don't mind Google's uh, business model where they – have machinery look at your stuff to get keywords and they can have advertising, target advertisers. It's actually kind of a brilliant idea. Nobody's going to, but now they're filtering out people ideologically. So, you know, there you go. The idea is fine, except when evil gets a hold of it and now they use it as a tool for oppression. And so that's where it's time to go. And it may end up costing money to have email, but that's okay. It's a free proton and it might be good enough. Uh, so, I think that's it. So, anyway, I, I employ if people implore if people want to ask questions, especially about theological aspects, and no matter how simple or complex it may be, I, I, I really would like that because I one of the things I liked when I taught uh, way back when in, in the Bible school, uh, Sunday school, was questions. Because then I would do like the next, you know, I would do an interim kind of lesson on that question. And I would come up with the answers, not what I think it is, but what presented itself. And then by bringing it out to the group, they are, their opinions can come up too. You know, so, uh, all right, I think that's it. The, uh, my little ending thing here, and we'll see you again next time. Now it's not gonna now it's not gonna play. What the program's gonna crash? Really? Here we go. All right. Reach for the skies within. God is there. Chipping his way out. And Jesus and his teachings help you chip the way in. <laughs> James at feet to the fire radio.com would be a great email to get a hold of me. The ancient one of my old friend, the one who walked before, the one who walked again, the ancient one of old, with wisdom for the new. Retell your timeless truths. Oh, it's your word. Feet to Fire is a production of IPS Media Works on the Onsig Radio Network of Stations. Right there beside